All right, this is 4.2. Reflections, um, essential question, things you're going to look at is how can you reflect a figure in a coordinate plane. Um, you're going to be able to perform reflections, do what's called a glide reflection. You have lines of symmetry, and we'll also look at some maybe some real-life problems involving reflections. All right, key concept, core concept, a reflection is a transformation that uses a line like a mirror to reflect a figure. The mirror part of it is called a line of reflection. So in this particular um, example, my line of reflection is going to be the y-axis. Right, so that would be like where the mirror would go, and so you would see the reflection um, of this triangle ABC. Okay, here's more terminology. You can read this. Reflection in line M maps every point P in the plane to a point P prime. That's what we call that little apostrophe there, if you can see that. Um, so that for each point, one of the following properties is true. If P is not on line M, then line M is the perpendicular bisector of segment P, P prime. Okay? Or the other thing that you can see of the property if P is on M, then P is equal to P prime. So basically what they're saying is that here's my line of reflection M, and I have this point P. Okay, the distance from P to that line of reflection is congruent to the distance from P prime to the line of reflex reflection. Notice that these lines here intersect that line of reflection at a 90 degree angle. Okay, so they're equidistant is another way of looking at it. Um, if P is on the line of reflection, then P prime is also that same point. It's also going to be on the line of reflection. All right, so here is our first example. We're going to reflect in horizontal and vertical lines. So the first thing they give us is that um, we're going to reflect triangle ABC on the line x equals 3. So first thing that we need to do is I'm going to draw this line equals x equals 3. So that's going to be this vertical line here going from this 3 coordinate. It would be straight up there. This would be x equals 3. Okay, then I have my point A, which is at 1, 3, which would be here. Point B is at 5, 2, which would be here. And then C is going to be at 2, 1. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and connect those. Here's A to B. And then we have B to C. Right, and then so I want to reflect it along this line. So notice that from A, it's two units. And since this is a, a vertical line, this is going to be my horizontal line. And it's going to be, if I trace that out, that's going to be my pin will work. And that's going to be one, two units away. So on the other side of it, I'm going to go two units this way. And this would become A prime. Right, B is two units from this direction, so I'm going to flip it over and go to the other side, two units. This would be B prime. And then C is going to go over one direction, or one unit. Okay, and then I'm going to connect those. All right, and that gives me the image A prime, B prime, C prime. And right, now we're going to do the same thing with um, a horizontal line at Y equals 1. So that is going to be here. Okay, and then the same thing, I'm going to graph my points. I'm going to have A at 1, 3. B is at 5, 2. C is at 2, 1. Okay, 
All right, so looking at this, reflecting it off of y equals 1, the distance from um, c is on line y equals 1, so c prime is going to be that same point there. So that's also c prime. Now, from y equals 1 and a, that's two units away. So then I'm going to come down two units. This would give me my a prime. b is one unit away from y equals 1. So that's going to be there. And then if I connect those two, or those three points, that gives me that um, re reflection. OK, this next example tells me to reflect along the line y equals x. So let me go ahead and get that drawn for you. All right, there's the line y equals x. OK. Basically, you go from 0, 0, you go up 1 over 1. And now I'm going to graph these points um, fg. Okay. And then so what you want, remember, you're looking at the equidistance. So this is going to come down straight this way at a 90 degree angle. So we're going to come back the other direction. And so g prime is going to be here. And if you want to think of it too, this one's going to come straight down this way at a 90 degree angle. So for f prime, you go diagonal this way one, and for half a diagonal, and then you come down across this direction. And f prime is here. All right, and there are some kind of shortcuts to this. Um, coordinate rules to find the images. Um, depending on where you're reflecting, if you're reflecting off the x-axis, you change, basically, the only thing you change is your y. So if it's b, it's going to become negative b. If you're on the y-axis, your x changes. It's the opposite x. If you're changing across the y equals x line, you flip your x and y values. If you're reflecting over a y equals negative x, then you want you flip them, and you also do the opposite values. So here you have a b. Then for your new coordinates, it's going to be negative b, negative a. Okay. So on example three, we're going to take that segment f g from example two, except this time we're going to reflect it on the y equals negative x line. Right, so there's y equals negative x. It's going kind of, y equals x is going this way. y equals negative x is going back in the kind of opposite direction. All right, and so here's F segment FG. Here's the coordinates. And according to the rules that we just stated, um, since I'm reflecting across the y equals negative x, I'm going to flip my exponents. So F prime, or my coordinates, F prime is going to be, 2, negative 1, but I also want to do the opposite, so this is going to become negative 2, positive 1, and then for g prime, those coordinates are going to be 2, 1, as I flip them, and then I have to negate them, I have to do the opposite, so it's going to be negative 2, negative 1. So I'm going to go ahead and graph that real quick, um, negative 2, positive 1, it's going to be my f prime, g is going to be negative 2, negative 1, So using, if I can remember these rules, it makes it easier to draw and get the coordinates, and that's what it would look like. That would be a reflection of segment FG on Y equals negative X. Okay, and here is a reflection postulate, and it just simply states that a reflection is a ridge in motion. All right, and here's a little explanation. God reflection is a transformation involving a translation followed by a reflection. So kind of like we talked about on 4.1, a composition where you're doing multiple steps. You're going to do a translation and a reflection in which every point P is mapped to point uh, P double prime by the following steps. First, you do a translation to go from P to P prime. Then you do a reflection to go from P prime to P double prime. All right, so here's P. You translated it up to P prime. Then once you're here at this P prime, you reflect it across over to this line K. Right, so it's just a multi-step 
process. Okay, and here's example four kind of illustrating that. We have this triangle ABC with these vertices 3, 2, 6, 3, and 7, 1. All right, and then we start by translating the picture. So if we're here at AB, triangle ABC, we translate it. So we go back 12. Okay, we didn't do anything with the Y value. And then once we got it from here, we're going to reflect it across the X axis. So once I'm up here, I'm going to bring it down and reflect it back over here to the X axis. All right, next we got um, identifying lines of symmetry and a figure in a plane has line symmetry when the figure can be mapped onto itself by a reflection in a line. This line of reflection is called a line of symmetry. Okay, so we're going to look at symmetry and we got some examples down here on number five, example five. All right, and we're going to look at symmetry. All right, so basically what I'm looking at is if I can kind of cut these two halves or I can fold these two on half and over each other, um, there, they would be an exact overlap. So my first line of symmetry that I would look at is I would be able to say that I could do this. This would be a line of symmetry here. Okay, because I'd be able to kind of fold this top half and it would be fit exactly perfectly over the bottom half. I could also come here and fold it this way. All right, so that that would be a line of symmetry. Now with a um, hexagon, there's actually several lines of symmetry um, because I could cut it this way or fold it this way. I could fold it going this direction and I would still get that same kind of trapezoid shape if I'm folding it along those vertices. But I could also come in and I could fold it here And then I could fold them this direction. And I could also fold it this way. Okay, and then for the last one, example 5C, the only way I'm going to be able to do a line of symmetry on this one is if I fold it here in half that way. I can't fold it or I can't draw a line this way because if I fold it in half coming in this direction it's not going to be congruent. Same thing going this direction. I can't come down and cut it vertically because they won't match. The only line of symmetry on 5C is this horizontal line. 